Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we will take a look at Microsoft's Xbox Series X versus my recently acquired Sony PlayStation 5 back in April of 2021. Having time to deal with both systems now, I will rate what I think of both of them and see if there's a clear winner for me. With the aesthetics and design of the console, the Series X wins this for me and purely my opinion, but the PS5 just looks too large, so different in comparison of to what I'm really used to. If it were a bit smaller, I'd say the PS5's form factor would have done much better, but as it is, I can't help to see that Sony finally missed on this design. When it comes to video games and releases, I'm gonna have to give a small nod to the PlayStation 5 for having more games available at this time that cannot be possible on last gen consoles like Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. But let's be realistic, I'm still playing games from the PS4 and Xbox One libraries, but advanced and accelerated on the now current gens. Although the games library is pretty bare on both ends, I've been revisiting so many games from last gen. Never before have I had so much fun revisiting games via backwards compatibility on both systems with higher frame rates, resolution, and just overall performance, the way the developers intended. But which does this better? The Xbox Series X does this better, hands down, with a smart delivery and virtually no hoops to jump through. Although some are automatically downloaded, games like Final Fantasy VII Remake have players going to the store and directly select the upgrade from the updated PS5 version or you will still be playing the PS4 edition. Plus, the Series X has Microsoft's own developers tweaking older Xbox One, 360, and original Xbox games without the need of a publisher stepping in and bringing many of them to 60 frames per second and increasing the resolution. The biggest and most controversial aspect of both systems for me is the controller. It isn't easy for me to just play another controller as the Xbox 360 started that trend for me as one of the best controllers ever made. That was my main decision for me choosing the PS4 first rather than the Xbox One, but I returned it and bought an Xbox One purely for playability and comfort. Welcome to the PS5's DualSense controller, which does feel like an upgrade to all of Sony's past controllers. Can't say much about the Series X, as it is pretty much the same as any other Xbox controller I have loved. With Sony's DualSense, especially with Astro Boy included with their system, it truly shows the advantages of the controller and the possibilities that truly feels like a step up. I still hate where the analog sticks are located, but it doesn't feel nearly as bad as previous controllers. But playing the games themselves are really what matters. For some reason, the games feel lighter and floatier on the PS5's controller where the Xbox Series X feels a bit more grounded. It's really hard to explain this feeling, but for those who learned how to drive cars and to drive stick shift and automatic, the PS5 feels like an automatic drive where the Series X feels like a stick shift drive with a bit more feeling and control. Although the Series X wins this round, the PS5 DualSense controller is the best one I've ever played in the PlayStation's entire history so far. Which system do I play more really comes down to one category and one category alone with their subscription service. Game Pass versus PlayStation Now that includes Plus has many options that is a must for gamers who own either system. With growing costs at $70 for a standard version of a current gen game, subscribing is the way to go to not break the bank. Each plan gives you many games to choose from, but only Game Pass gives you games on day one. For Sony, you may have to wait four to six months before trying out newer games, but Microsoft, they were on day one to try. Never before have I played so many options on first and third party games that usually would kill me on my budget on day one. Although I do use a PlayStation Plus program as well, on the PS5, I find myself waiting for a sale or buying a used game on some of them I want to try. Ghost of Tsushima is a great example of a first person game 
still not available on Plus, where I waited to be on sale, but would have been playing immediately if on Game Pass. As of right now, both systems play great and exactly what I expected. With a drought of games on both sides, I have leaned heavily in backwards compatibility and have played the Series X much more with more games available that I want to play. I know that the PS5 still has incredible games to play and exclusives. I feel like after that though, I still return to Series X to see what's new to play like Yakuza, like a dragon, newly released on Game Pass, yet another game I want to try. For now, Game Pass really has won me over for the Xbox Series X. That's it for me on this look at Sony's and Microsoft's offering to the next gen gaming. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Be ho out and great. Take us out of here, and I will see you all next upload. To say goodbye. I'm such a mess. I'm lost. I'm no good at this. Damn. Keep, keep. Who cares? My season climbs to the who's who here. Freestyle, so free in the style. Eat me, lean over the on a mile. Yeah. Really less of a candy. Less of a dandy. School guy, AA's like when it was Randy. Eat with the toys like a Mike in the 80s. Still got no, no Randy.